My presentation is on the genetic evidence of hybridization between the endangered native species Iguana delicatissima and the invasive Iguana iguana in the Lesser Antilles. The Lesser Antillean Iguana is found on multiple islands in the Lesser Antilles chains of the Caribbean Sea. They're found in scrub woodlands, rainforests, and mangrove environments. The species is oviparous, and the coloration varies among islands, but base color tends to be gray with greenish splotches on the underside. Males are usually larger than females, ranging around 40 centimeters in body length and a total of 120 centimeters, including the tail. Females are about two-thirds of this size. The species is primarily herbivorous, feeding on leaves, flowers, fruits, and growing shoots of many different species of plants. The green iguana is native to southern Brazil and Paraguay, ranging all the way up to parts of Mexico and some of the Caribbean islands. They are invasive on the Lesser Antilles Islands, Puerto Rico, and parts of the United States, including Florida, the Virgin Islands, Rio Grande Valley in Texas, and Hawaii. The species is also herbivorous and also has coloration varying from different populations, going from green to red to lavender to black, reddish brown, and in places in Mexico you can see them as orange. The species is also primar primarily herbivorous, eating leaves, flowers, and growing shoots, leading them to be direct competition for food sources with the Western Antillians. At the tunnel part, you can notice here in these two pictures I have, the Lesser Antillian has a more blockish kind of head than the Green Iguana does, and the stripes in the Green Iguana's tail is missing on the Lesser Antillians. The Lesser Antillians also do not have that large white scale underneath their ear opening. As you can see here, it's not present. And the Lesser Antillians have a pink coloration on their cheeks, which is obviously not here on the green one. They also have kind of white scales on top of their head, like an ivory kind of color, whereas the, less, the green iguana does not have those kind of white scales. Here's a closer picture look. You can very clearly see the pink coloration of the scales in his cheek, as well as the absence of that large white scale underneath the ear opening in the green iguana. You can also notice that this head is a little bit more elongated than this one which has a more blockyish kind of shape. Under the ICUN, the Lesser Antillian Iguana is labeled as critically endangered and also on the red list. Legally, they're, legally they are protected from hunting, but enforcement on regulations is extremely difficult. Other threats include habitat loss, urban development, and feral predators such as dogs, cats, or mongoose. But their greatest threat is the green iguana, which has direct competition for food and resources. Habitization also occurs between the green iguana and the lesser Antillean iguana, causing the, green, the lesser Antillean iguana's populations to drop even further. In this study, they're looking for evidence of hybridization between the two iguana species, as well as determining if the hybrids are viable, and to see if hybridization occurs between both a male green iguana and a female lesser Antillian, and vice versa. In order to answer these questions, genetic tests were done in the lab setting and samples were taken from both species as well as hybrids. The methods used for this to get DNA was to catch the animals either in a kind of noose or just by hand and then clip the end of their tails for DNA. For each one, their morpho morphologies were recorded and multiple pictures were taken. This is because all of them were ID'd based on morphology characteristics. They also had passive integrated transponders tagged in their left legs with ID numbers in order to keep track of them, also to be used for conservational purposes in the future. In total, they had 133 individuals sampled, with 59 being the lesser Antillian iguanas, 47 being the green iguanas, and 27 of them being hybrids. The Lesser Antillians were only sampled from areas and populations where there were no green iguanas present in order to make sure they didn't accidentally take a hybrid. In order to determine a hybrid, they looked at both the um, Lesser Antillians being present in the island as well as the green iguanas. And they also looked at that specific iguana that they captured to make sure it had morphological characteristics of both species as well.
So for this, they used 50 microsatellites and amplified for both the lesser Antillian and the green iguanas. They also used a genetics program in order to get an estimated average of alleles per locus for both the lesser Antillian iguana and the green iguana, as well as the hybrids. They also did a deviation from Hardy Weinberg equilibrium calculation and genotype genotypic linkage disequilibrium between each pair of loci estimated. Sorry about that. Um, they also did a species genetic clustering where they had K set as two and then made 10 independent runs to analyze. They also did a discriminant analysis of principal component, which they used to investigate the population genetic structure between each species, as well as between populations within the species. And finally, they did a characterized mitochondrial introgression for the hybrids. For the results shown here in figure A, you can see that it's a genetic cluster data. And it's identifying both species using only genetic data. So part A, which is this top part here, is showing genetic clusters with K equaling 2. So it has it set as, here is the lesser Antillian. You can see it's very easily defined. The green iguana, and then you have the hybrid, which has a mixture of both. Next up, they added a hybrid assignment using a new hybrid software, which created this section over here. And it made it even greater uh, differentiation. Part C of this graph separated individuals by areas they were sampled. So here is one area, and then you got another different samples, third area, another area. So they're each set up with the areas they were taken from. The table at the bottom shows a genetic assessment in comparison with different different classifications and methods and hybrids. So just a different kinds of settings and class for the different classifications. So here you have new hybrid relax, new hybrid strict, high best class, high strict, and it gave slightly different outcomes for each one. This graph shows distribution of ancestry and individual heterozygosity of bivariate coordinate systems. So on the x-axis here, you can see it has an admixed shear coefficient uh, in it, and the heterozygosity is on the y-axis. I have trouble reading this. Uh, yeah. So for the first one, it has them organized as you can see it has hybrid F1, F2, back cross, and then both of the other species as well as the unclassified all set in the graph. While part B has it set up the same kind of way, except instead of using F1, F2, and all that other stuff, it uses only hybrids and then uses the placings as areas. So a different color represents a different area. So these graphs are the shown outcome of the discriminant analysis of principal component. The first one is a Bayesian information criterion value compared with the increasing cluster numbers. So if we get up here, you notice they started at two. And as they increased, the BIC started to go down and down and down. And once you hit 10, that was its lowest point, which went after you hit 10 clusters and you increased, it kept going up, up, and up, and up, and up again. On uh, B, it shows a neighbor joining tree representing the genetic relationship among 10 clusters. So you can see here, it's got numbers 1, 2, 3, etc. And that 1 is closer to 10, 3 is pretty close to 2, 5 is closer to 3 and 2 than it is to this one, and so on and so forth. For part C of it, it shows the same thing, but it's a greater visualization where it shows the clusters, but with each individual shown instead. So each dot here is an individual and then the coloration represents their cluster. For part D of it, it shows the cluster with the coloration and then it shows what species they correspond to. So this one is a lesser Antillian, this would be the green iguana, and then this is a hybrid. So each different coloration is represented in its different species. 
for part E, it's showing individuals clustered with their species ID, but it's at the population origin. So every individual is put in, but whatever population origin they came from is where they are inserted to. So for the discussion here, the male iguana behavior and physical characteristics contributing contributed to the dominance over lesser Antillian iguanas. They were more aggressive and they were able to take the females away and which lessened breeding opportunities for them. Um, genetic analysis that the authors went over afterwards led to the green iguana samples actually being found to originate from northern South America, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, the hybrids are able to reproduce and they can occur in both directions of parent crossbreeding. So male, green iguana, female, lesser Antillian, and vice versa. With this hybridization occurring, it causes short-term displacement and extinction, occur extinction of the lesser Antillian. And if it continues, it can possibly eliminate them by introgression. With this paper introducing further evidence of hybridization, as well as the increased hybridization and possible impacts that it has on the species, increased need for conservational plan and invasive species removal actions should be more organized and take action quickly. That if this trend continues, hybridization increases, and eventually the populations of the lesser Antillians will go from endangered to extinct and no longer be around. They'll just be hybrids and green iguanas. This concludes my this concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening.